So uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how I make um, a SketchUp a room using an architect's plan. So we're going to be doing all the walls, doors and windows. Um, and this is the architect's plan, which I've been sent from the client. Um, as you can see, there's no dimensions on the actual plan, but we have got a scale here up in the top right. So that's what we're going to use to resize it within SketchUp and then use it as a sort of template to trace around it. So I'm going to go ahead and open SketchUp. So the first thing we need to do is uh, import the plan into the SketchUp model. However, at the moment it's only a PDF, so um, we need to convert it to a JPEG. And how I normally do this, um, there's various ways you can do it, but I use this website called Small PDF. There's loads of websites you can you can do it from. Um, and go to Tools. Yeah, it's this one here, um, PDF to JPEG. So click that, then simply choose your file. And that will upload. Um, I'm not on the paid version at the moment, so I only want the single page. So we click that, choose Option, and that will convert online. It's a really useful little site actually and so there's our JPEG and it's decent quality as well so it doesn't go too fuzzy so we're downloading that um, so that's in our downloads folder so let's go back to SketchUp and then we go to file import to our downloads folder there it is click it once and then let's set the bottom corner and then just drag it to, it doesn't really matter where what size it is at the moment because we're going to resize it. So next thing I do is I explode it um, and then get the tape measure tool on the left, click it once and then you want to click on the scale here at the start, drag it all the way to the end as accurately as you can to where the four meter mark is, left click again and then immediately type um, the measurement in. I'm in millimetres so I'm going to type 4000 which is 4 metres. Press enter and then you get this little box pop up saying do you want to resize the model. So you click yes and I'm going to quickly group that again. So it's one. So now that should be to scale and we can test it by getting the tape measure tool. Click. Of course it's never going to be accurate you know a million percent but um, there we go four meters that's what we want so now everything's to scale and we can sort of draw and trace around all of the walls so the only parts of the plan that we're interested in are the kitchen area and the utility room so it's this area here which has got the kitchen it also includes the sitting room and the dining room but we're going to we're going to make that whole square and the utility room. Um, so one way you could do this is with a line tool and then you just sort of trace around the edges and do that um, for, for both rooms. But I have a bit of a shortcut. I just use the rectangle tool, just get it into one corner and then just pull it down and then the utility we're going to ignore the internal walls at the moment. So once there, let's join it to that square and then delete this joining line. So you have this area here. And then a quick way to do the walls. Uh, you just press the offset tool, which is this one here. Uh, sorry, not the, that one, uh, this one here. I've got a shortcut key for that, but don't worry about it for now. Click once on the edge, drag out so it's in line, click again, and there we are with our walls. I can't see anywhere what the ceiling height is, so we're just going to go for uh, 2,400, 2.4 meters. So we use the push-pull tool, click once in the wall area, push it up and type 2,400, press enter, and there's our wall. So at this point, um, I will want to switch to x-ray mode and also hide the floor so we can see through it better. So first I'm going to group the floor by double-clicking it. Group. 
and then click on it and hide it. I've just pressed Shift and H, uh, which is a shortcut for hide. And then we go to this little square here, cube, press that, that's the X-ray cube. So now we can actually see through the model. Um, and this is useful for putting our windows and doors in. So let's do this internal wall here first. So tape measure tool, to bring up the guide and inference it to this corner. So you just go out of X-ray mode so you can see what's happening. Press the line tool, which again is a shortcut key. Push pull, inference it to there. And let's just delete that little line and we have our internal wall. Uh, back to X-ray mode. So now I'm going to make all the openings for our windows and doors. So we'll start from this corner here and then work our way around um, sort of clockwise. So first off, we've got these bifold doors here. So T for tape measure tool. Um, move the guide out, hold shift down so it goes along the red axis and then click on this point on the bottom. With the tape measure tool still activated, um, move it so it snaps to that line, just move it across, press shift again so it doesn't uh, go off the axis and then set the next point which is there. Same thing again, tape measure tool activated, press shift, inference it to this little point here. Same thing again. And then let's set the height. Now these are bifold doors, so I'm gonna make those two 100 high. Just type two 100. R for rectangle tool. And then just draw a rectangle on the points. Push pull, makes the hole. Rectangle tool, push pull, there we go. And then we can delete these guides. I've got a shortcut, just press G, otherwise it'll get too messy. <clears throat> okay, double door, tape measure tool, same thing. We'll go to this point here, because that's the frame of the door. Holding shift on the green axis this time. Going to make that 2050. Each guide is on an axis. There we go. Just to come out of X ray mode for a minute. Delete the guides. Okay, what have we got on this wall? We've got a double door here. So from the corner, bring it out on the red axis, inference it just there. Doesn't have to be exactly right. The millimeter, I mean. Blue axis, 2050. Rectangle tool. Really important to use uh, shortcuts when you're doing your um, modeling. It just speeds up the workflow so quick. So although these tools are appearing by magic, they've just been assigned um, a shortcut key rather than me come over to this menu all the time and and keep looking for it. Okay, just a couple more doors to go from the corner. Green axis this time. Again, holding shift to stick along the axis. Make sure on the blue axis there. Rectangle tool, and then we have a window. Uh, right, so from the floor to the bottom of the window, we're going to go for 1050, which I use as standard, as millimetres. And then the actual height of the window, um, I normally make it 1100. So let's just delete this guide, which was the top of the door. From that guide, on the blue axis, type 1100. Then rectangle tool, push-pull. Let it snap into place, and there we go. Our opening for the window. Um, just quickly double check, yep, that's pretty much everything. Give it a save. Okay, let's uh, start with some doors. Um, let's turn the X-ray off. 
Okay, so we've got these double doors here. Not sure exactly what style it is, so I'm just going to use something generic. I'm going to pull up the components um, window. Um, I've got a shortcut key for that, but normally you can do it from Windows, Components, and then just pull up the tray from there. Okay, so we're going to use um, these double sort of glazed oak type doors. So just move those into place and then use the scale tool, which I'm pressing S for, get the middle square and then just snap them into place. And then we've got similar style doors over here. Let's flip them round. And then just snap them into place. Slightly wider these ones. So use the scale tool. And there we go. Um, then we've got the bifold doors. So I think these are sort of, yeah, four doors here. Two sets, uh, two pairs rather. So let's bring up our components again. Um, here we go, bifold doors four, flip them round, snap them into place. Just move a little bit there, that's the one. Scale tool, and then you want the middle little uh, cube there, and it snaps into place. Duplicate that by moving control, and almost the same, but let's just move them in a little bit. There we go. Um, and then I want to move these a little bit to the back, so we have, um, so they step in a bit. Okay, let's give it a quick save. Uh, this window here, let's just have a look. Okay, so that's um, it's a three pane window. Before I go ahead and do anything else, I'm going to quickly treble click the wall and make it a group so I don't inadvertently move anything on the wall. Um, go to the components window again. This time we go to windows. And these are all my saved components, which. Okay, here we go. Here's a three pane. Move them into place. Use the scale tool to just make it slightly bigger. That's fine. And then again, like the doors, we're just going to step them back a bit. Okay, just one more door here. So uh, let's go back to doors in the component list. And the one I want to use is this one, just a Howden standard door, which my client likes. Let's flip it around and then snap it into place. And then it needs to be slightly smaller. So just try and find that other little square on the scale tool areas hidden behind the wall, move it in a bit. And there's our door. So um, that's all of the elements of the room into place now. So let's hide that. And um, yeah, so now the room's ready and we can start adding our components.